In today's video, we're going to walk through creating a new Flutter application that has typed end-to-end -end service integration with your own custom Service Stack services, and how to seamlessly maintain this integration even as new APIs are added. Flutter provides a great development experience to build apps for Android, iOS, Windows, MacOS, Linux, and the web, all using the same Dart codebase. Dart and Flutter have improved a lot over the years, and this is thanks to both having the resources and expertise of Google behind them. This level of backing has given Flutter exceptional cross-platform support and documentation for the framework written in a well-designed language with great tooling. Rapid hot reload for multiple platforms makes for a productive development workflow, and when combined with Service Stack services, we get typed end-to-end -end service integration that is flexible and easy to maintain. Today we will create a new Flutter Android to-do application with a backing Service Stack Blazor server backend. This combination could be ideal for those looking to have a mobile or app-first product where you still need easy web management of users, data, monitoring, etc. for admin users to access. To create this solution, we're going to use the Service Stack.NET X tool and the Flutter SDK. You can install the .NET X tool by using the command .NET tool install gx. The Flutter SDK can be installed using the instructions on the Flutter website for which I'll put a link in the description. There are just two steps to this install, which are 1. Clone the Flutter GitHub repository, and 2. Put the bin directory in your path environment variable. Next, we will create our service stack backend using the .NET X tool. We can do this using the command x new space blazor hyphen server space to do app. The blazor server template comes with example hello to do and booking services built in, so we won't need to add any additional services for this example, so instead we will focus on the creation of the new Flutter front end and integration. The quickest way to add a new Flutter client application is to use the Service Stack X tool again, but this time to run the command x mix space flutter from your solution directory. This will create a to do underscore flutter directory that contains our Flutter application that is already configured to be integrated to your Service Stack backend. And now we have a Blazor server solution we can run and leave it running while we work on our to-do Flutter client using Android Studio. You can program in Dart using various different IDEs and tools like Dartpad, Eclipse, VS Code and others, but today we're going to be building our to-do application as a mobile app for Android using Android Studio. Just by creating our Flutter application using the xmix flutter command, it is already integrated with the Blazor server project example hello service. We can see this in our Flutter project in the main.dart file under the lib directory. At the top of the main.dart file, we can see a conditional import of servicestack.client.dart. This is to support both web and native Flutter clients together in the same codebase. The client factory is used with our Blazor server URL to create an iService client ready to communicate with our server for both web and native clients. The project is also set up to make Android development easier to get started when using the Android emulators. A check is done during non-release builds to point to 10.0.2.2 to communicate with our Blazor server APIs. This is due to networking restrictions when using the Android emulator and doesn't need to be used when releasing your app. Scrolling down further in the main.dart file, we can see our Hello Flutter state class, which controls the state of our built in example, including the integration with our running server APIs. Just like other server stack clients, we don't need to specify any API paths, and everything is typed end to end from client to server. The hello and hello response classes come from the dtos.dart file which is generated by our running service stack server automatically based on the registered services of that application. 
And now that we have an overview of the basic Flutter template and how it interacts with our services, let's extend what we have here and incorporate a to-do app into our Flutter application. Our Blazor server already has some to-do services, so we can leave our server running and focus on the Flutter application. Let's create a to-do widget in a new file called todo.dart, also in the lib folder, and stub out our stateful widget. We will use a scaffold and an app bar with some text we pass in through a title just like our hello flutter object. Then back in main.dart, we switch out the use of hello flutter with our new to do widget for the material app home widget and our emulator hot reloads these changes showing a new blank page. Next, we will need a field to store the current to do data that we retrieve from our API. Looking at our C-Sharp server, we have an auto query API request DTO class called query to do's that returns a query response using the to do model type. However, back in our Flutter client and the DTOs.dart file, we only have our hello service related request and response DTOs. We will need to update the DTOs.dart file to get the rest of our DTOs from our running server. And you can do this in two ways. Since we already have the servicestack.net x tool installed, we can navigate to the lib directory and run the command x dart. This will look for compatible files like dtos.dart and attempt to update them from the registered base URL address in the options comment in the file itself. And since our server is running, this updates as expected. Another way to update your DTO files is to use the Service Stack plugin for JetBrains based IDEs. This enables the ability to use the Alt Enter context menu in the DTOs.dart file to update a single compatible file directly from our IDE. And that's all we have to do to maintain this integration with our server. It keeps our client DTOs up to date with our server, ensuring a typed end-to-end -end integration that's easy to use and maintain. There are no intermediate file formats to complicate matters and our DTOs are generated directly from our server with options listed and maintained from the file itself. Now we can go back to our todo.dart file and declare our list of to-do item fields but we still need to populate these fields with data from the server. Since we already have an iService client we created back in the main.dart file, we are going to reuse this instance using a static method we can call from todo.dart to keep things simple. Using this iService client, we're going to call the query to do's API by using the get method and creating a query to do's request DTO. Since we want all of them, we don't need to specify any parameters in the request, but this could be used for filtering if needed just by populating the related properties on the request DTO. So we now have a method of query to do's that requests data from our running server APIs, but we aren't yet storing the response. Let's also create a refresh to do's method as an easy way to update our to do's when data changes. Because this state is on our widget, we need to make sure our UI knows about the changes by using the setState method. We will also use this refresh to do's method when the widget first loads. We can do this by overriding the init state method and binding to the add post frame callback. Now with our data wired up, let's create a view for the to-do data by using the list view builder and the checkbox list tile for each to-do item. One of the big advantages of working with Flutter is the ability to build these UIs quickly while seeing and interacting with the result instantly thanks to the hot reload functionality. So we'll keep both our server and our Flutter client running now while we create the rest of the UIs. Next, let's wire up the ability to create to-do items from a text input. We will need a method to create our to-dos taking a string of the to-do text. Using the client, we can then post a create to-do request DTO, populating the text property with the passed in string and return the to-do. We can then use a text controller with a new text field and call the create to-do method from the onSubmitted event. 
Once the request is completed, the then function callback will fire and we can add the result from the server API directly to our to-do lists locally. We can do this directly since we have typed results straight from our server. We didn't need to construct a copy ourselves or deserialize the result. All the model information is inferred from the generated request DTOs and the server stack iService client. Next, we will add support for marking off to-do items as finished. We will need an update to-do method taking a to-do item instance and passing the properties to the update to-do request DTO. We can then update the onChanged event for the checkbox list tile, calling update to-do with the updated value on the isFinished property. Our Android emulator is hot reloaded and we can check off some values to test and then validate our server has been updated by using the running Blazor server web view. And lastly, we can wire up the delete functionality using the secondary option on our checkbox list tile widget with an icon button. The on pressed event will call a new delete to do method and refresh our to dos from the server once it returns. Testing our app now, we have the create, update, and now delete functionality all working, all while not restarting our services or Flutter front end, and we have confidence in the API integration thanks to the typed end-to-end -end safety. That rapid iteration is key to building front ends quickly. Flutter gives us the rapid hot reload functionality on native clients and the web, just like Blazor Server, gives us a great way to build admin pages using the Visual Studio development tools. As we have seen in this example, the Flutter tooling experience is extremely polished and works targeting each different platform. Running our app from Windows, Android or web is as easy as changing the target from Android Studio. Service Stack's Flutter integration and mix templates gives you everything you need to have the best possible development experience with typed end-to-end -end integration when building Flutter clients. By building your backend using Service Stack services, there is a polished development workflow with typed end-to-end -end integration to suit any development team. This combined with the additional service stack tooling support in all modern IDEs and support for nine languages including Dart shows the advantages that service stack services bring when building your APIs. Well that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the service stack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. Service Stack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.